got, you know, color and stuff. It looks nice. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, it, it's a good experience, but everybody picks, uh, they have a poem. Uh, you can either walk up there, which you better be in good shape. You can also, they have for like, I think it's $25 for the whole day. You can go up and back on the ski lift. Okay. Um, but there was nobody up there that we wanted to be sit, so we didn't really worry about it. Everybody that we wanted to see was staying down. And that just worked out. And then you've got your row of all the markers and everything. You know, they actually have a thing for kids' services. Sour did not want to go to the kids' service. It just, it was because of the rain and because she didn't feel well. I don't know if she got a sleep bug or the allergies were bothering her. We didn't go swimming. Stuff, so, yeah. Next year will be better. We're already signed up for that. Yeah. Hello there. That's some shirt, let me tell you. You ought to see the other ones I got. <laughs> I don't know, I might be afraid. <laughs> Big love. <laughs> What's the P for? Huh? What's the P for on your mask? P? The P? Oh, oh. I was wondering if it was the Patriots or whether it's the Phillies. <laughs> Just checking, that's all. Oh. It's fantastic to feel that little cool in the air, I think. I want to welcome you all to the worship service of First Congregational Church, St. Albans. My name is the Reverend Jessica Moore. I am joined this morning with Stefan Camarati on piano and organ. We have uh, Lane McElry, our videographer, is back from Soul Fest. We're glad that they're here. And Doug Cleet will be our scripture reader this morning. First Congregational Church of the United Church of Christ is an open and affirming congregation. We are a welcoming community of believers, seekers, and doubters. And please know that no matter where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here to travel with us. I think we have a thank you this morning that Judy will read.
Good morning. We would like to give a special thank you to Alice Drizzling for the beautiful fresh cut flowers that we have on the altar. Thank you. It's like a meadow. I want to remind everyone that we are masking in the sanctuary. I have taken mine off so you can understand the words I speak. If you are uncomfortable, please raise your hand a little bit or nod to me and I'll put it back on, okay? Uh, we will not be singing the hymns, but we'll be listening and maybe nodding our heads to them. I want to remind you that on the 28th is our 50-50 yard sale. So you bring your stuff, set it up, sell it, you split the profits with the church. If it doesn't sell and you can't pawn it off to a fellow congregant, you have to take it home. Next Saturday morning, 9 a.m., is the Women's Fellowship Breakfast. We do need RSVP, so please let, let Sue know, and she, she will put you on the list and make the reservation. Do we have any other announcements? Please join me for worship. This morning's call to worship. Come into this household of God, that we might listen to God's word and discern the wisdom that comes only from God. How can we discover such wisdom? Reverence for God is the beginning of wisdom. When we choose to live according to God's will and plan, God will give each of us a wise and discerning heart. God fills us with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We have come to praise with music from our hearts. Jesus is here in our midst as living bread. We want to be nourished and strengthened that we may remain with him. Jesus is so close that we can taste his presence. Praise the Lord. Learn of God's compassion and mercy. Praise the Lord with our hearts. Praise the Lord. Our first hymn that we'll be hearing is Holy, 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 and please remain seated. confession spoken in unison. All wise God, we thank you for giving us this time to look into our words, thoughts, and deeds. We confess that we fool ourselves into believing that we possess all the knowledge that we need. As we go from place to place, we try to block you out. 
even though we say we want to hear your word and speak with you, we fail to see that we are always in your presence. We stray seeking other gods whose ways may be easy but cannot show us the ways of love and truth. We are afraid of being fed with this living bread of Jesus. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that we might live each day according to your will and plan for us and for your world. Help us to discern your wisdom that we might live eternally with you and Christ. As we look at the brokenness of the world and of our actions, it can seem a little bleak. But please know that no matter how we trip or fall, that God is there to catch us and that God loves us without condition each and every moment of each and every day. Amen. We'll now do the blessing of the passing of the peace. We're going to augment it, make it a little simpler. No touching because of the Delta variant, please. Uh, namaste hands, prayer hands, maybe an elbow tap if you feel so inclined. We will say to each other, the peace of God or the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. that we have so little in common. <laughs> you see, in my family, food equals love. And maybe that's an indicator of our family dysfunction, or maybe it's simply our Slavic, Polish heritage. We communicate through fried cabbage and noodles. <laughs> Polish grandmothers, you know, they don't actually have to be women. I remember when I was visiting my mother's family they, with my sister, I was in the seventh grade and we hadn't really had a chance to meet them because we lived very far away. So my parents bundled my sister and I up, put us on a plane and our grandparents met us. And one day my grandparents took us on a tour of all of the relatives' houses. And these are people who are immigrant generation through second generation. And every house we went to had a buffet table packed with food. 
And it wasn't just any food. This was food that in my home, growing up, was reserved for Easter. So it was our favorite food. It was holiday food. And we went about eating our way through Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> By, we we're almost done with this, and I had collected that one of the other things besides the food is we were given these rubber change purses, you know, the kind where you squeeze, and they were filled with dollars. <laughs> it was very exciting. By the end of it, I had four of these change purses, and I was really half sick from eating so much. And we arrived at the final house. And, and there was an uncle there, a very old man from the old country. And he is, or was, a cake pusher. He gave us cake. With a twinkle in his eye, he watched us eat it. As we were already full and hardly getting it down, he just continued to smile and twinkle at us as he said, have some more cake. Have some more cake. I thought, where have you been all my life? <laughs> it all became clear to me that that was where my mother got it from. I remember once coming home from college, it was late Friday evening, I was visiting for a weekend, and I was barely through the door when my mother sat me down, put a plate of roast chicken and potatoes in front of me and sat across from me and said, how is school? What are you learning? Are you getting along with your roommates? In my family, are you sick? Are you sad? Well, we'll cook and we'll eat. Are you happy? Are you celebrating? We cook and we eat. Even this weekend at our house, we've all been feeling a little out of sorts, perhaps from the heat. And my sister said to me once the, the heat broke yesterday, she said, you know what we need? Comfort food. You'll see, the world will be right again. And we did, we cooked some mac and cheese and we felt better. Food is really, it's so much more than food. More enjoyable than simple texture and flavor. And so much more than fuel. I think my friend on the cake was a little reductionist. And we both missed the fact that food can create connection. A shared meal is a shared experience. We all eat. It's part of the human experience. It's one of those great equalizers. In my family, as in many families, food is an expression of love. My family, as with many families, struggles at times with verbal expressions of love and appreciation. But we'll make you liver and onions because this calf's liver is so tender and I got a really good deal on this bacon and I want you to have it. We're communicating at a level where our words often fail us. This morning's gospel reading from John is a reference to the Eucharist, to communion. And this is where that institution is noted in John's Gospel. Communion is such an important ritual. It's a sacrament for us as Protestants. It's a sacrament for Catholics. So what does it mean and why do we celebrate communion? This ritual, the shared meal with Jesus, it's not something that is easily defined. Leaving Jesus out of it for a moment, the imagery simply of bread and wine, alone they carry a deep meaning for all of us. For me, through the context of my life, they immediately represent love. But that's not across the board, it's not everyone's experience. Someone with an eating disorder may have a very, has a very different relationship with food. But it's still meaningful in some way. So we already have a living relationship with these things, bread and wine. 
then Jesus, Jesus uses those images to help describe how we're to imbibe the word. As Christians, we have a ritual that illustrates this, that helps us connect to Jesus, God, and each other. Communion. I've been reading from A Man and His Symbols. In it, there's an article by Carl Jung called Approaching the Unconscious. In it, he discusses cultural symbols, those symbols that we, as humans, use to point to eternal truths. These types of symbols are used by religions, for instance, and have developed and transformed over a long period of time. And they've become collective images accepted by society or by a special community or specific community. These cultural images are not lifeless. They're not even easily defined, just as communion is not lifeless and it's not easily defined. Jung writes, they are pieces of life itself, images that are integrally connected with the living individual. As such, there's a relationship between the individual and that cultural symbol. It's that relationship that infuses the cultural symbol with meaning and life. If you try to rigidly define that symbol, it loses its vitality because you've broken the relationship and uncoupled the symbol from its life force, which is the individual. So you have these cultural symbols whose meanings are fluid, they're amorphous, and their meaning is a product of our relationship with them. This has made me think about rituals in general, which I think are formal ways of creating a relationship with a cultural symbol. But it's really made me think about communion. In the reading, we have the image of the bread, which nourishes our bodies. Jesus as the bread, which nourishes our spirits and our souls. Communion. Reading what Jung had to say about a cultural image being brought to life through the relationship we have with it as individuals, the context of our lives affects that relationship, which means that though we share a symbol, the meaning we receive from it differs, which is just a long way of saying it all brings me back to Wednesday's Bible study. In the Bible study, I asked the question, what does communion mean? We had 11 people in Bible study. We had 11 different definitions and takes on communion. They were all equally valid. They had similarities, but more than that, they were complementary to each other. Communion is how we show and reaffirm our belief in Jesus, how we connect as a community how we remember Jesus, his death, and the forgiveness of sins. It's a cleansing. It's a prayerful moment, a connection with God and others. It's a simple act of acceptance. It's embracing the mystery. It's beyond words. And even though those words are meaningful, the act itself Excuse me, that was someone else's thought. It's beyond words. And even someone who thought that though the words were meaningful in the service, the act itself was not as meaningful. For us at First Congregational, we also talked about the additional level of meaning and specialness of our communion because we have special homemade communion sets that were specifically designed for us and baked with love and care by John. Those mini scones with lemon, they're designed to have their flavors increase when we dip it in the grape juice. That was a lot of thought and a lot of care to put into something. Our collective thoughts on communion point to what Jung would call numinosity or psychic energy or really vitality. There is something vital for us in the ritual of communion. 
It marks and helps nurture our living relationship with God. And isn't that why we're all here to some extent? To deepen and nourish our relationship with God? I think through the ritual of communion, the simple act of going to church and of gathering in potlucks or breakfasts on, on Saturday morning, we're reminding ourselves that we're connected. We're taking a break from the narrow focus of our busy, everyday lives to live into that expansive, spirit-filled existence of God. And shouldn't that really be our goal all the time? I think, yeah, I, I, we all know that that's the goal, but it's not easy. Our lives are overwhelming and noisy. After all, that's why some monastic people choose to live isolated, away from modern life. Is there, is there a way that we can seek communion in the everyday busyness of our lives? To set aside the busyness for a moment. What are the small rituals, the everyday rituals, that can help keep us connected to each other and through each other to God? What do you practice? Is it pausing for a moment in the sun in your garden? Sharing a smile with a stranger? Enjoying the news of the day over a plate of fried cabbage and noodles? How do we live our everyday lives as a holy sacrament? And I mean that as a real question. How do we live our lives as a holy sacrament? And I do take suggestions. Amen. I have perhaps misplaced my program, but I know there's a second hymn coming up, so please enjoy.
have reached joys and concerns. Do you have a joy or a concern that you would like the congregation to pray with you about? There's a broken record here. Ten way, telling you thank you again for your prayers for our youngest daughter and for her husband and our new granddaughter Ariadne. We look at them all the time. We love them to pieces. And I really feel that the support and love of the congregation helped to make this experience as good as it could be for them. The Olympics are over. Our kids are relaxing. And thank you all very much. I, I, I thank God and I thank you all. We're very, very happy. Thank you. Uh, we got home from Soul Fest, and I called a friend of mine who I keep in touch with that I graduated with, and he advised me that his wife two months ago passed away from COVID ID. They live in they lived in Florida. Uh, he's very uh, down, and uh, I'd like a prayer for him and also for his wife. Uh, it uh, struck me. So. What, what's your friend's name, Lane? Robert Bradshaw. I'm sorry for your friend. The more things change, the more they stay the same with COVID, it feels like. Anything else, Stephen? Oops, and then we'll go to Doug. Go um, ahead. It was just the people of Haiti don't seem to be able to... Um, it just had a bad earthquake there. Yeah. My concern is with the people in Afghanistan. My heart goes out to them because if you think about it, it's kind of like uh, they're on the Titanic and they know there's going to be a lot of people killed. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Watching a train wreck. Anyone else? Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, wonderful creator, we are blessed and we rejoice with you in your creation. We glory in the summer weather the coolness after the heat feels especially wonderful. And surrounded by your creation, we are reminded that you are always near to us, O God of peace. Holy One, right now so much seems to be broken in our world. Wildfires still rage out west. The people of Haiti deal with yet another disaster with this earthquake. We pray for the people of, of Afghanistan. Forgive us and help us to change our ways. This morning we pray especially for Lane's friend Robert and the recent loss of his wife from COVID-19. May Robert find some solace and love and healing in the coming days, weeks, and months. We pray for Johnny Douglas, who was in a serious car accident. Sarah has wonderful time being on a cheer team with him. Our prayers go to him in his recovery and his family. We pray for those who struggle with mental illness and their families. May we find a way to honor and help all those children, all those people live safe, creative, and satisfying lives. We pray for those who are suffering from long-term oppression and racism. We pray for those living with the ramifications of colonialism and military occupation. 
We pray for those of our congregation who cannot make it to service, Edith and Flossie and Mary. And in this list of woes and misses, let us not forget the joys, the joys of happy and healthy grandchildren, the support that the community has for each other, a true gift from God. Oh Lord, we help, ask you to help us reach out more to you with, through your love. Help us to reach out to each other through that love. Help us to delight in you and your creation. And if you would join me for the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.